Greetings everyone, and today I have a review on this old Class D amplifier board. It's this HX M252 model based on the TDA8954 chip from NXP Semiconductors. And by the way, this chip is now obsolete so amp modules that uses this chip will be very hard to find. Now looking at its datasheet, it can take supply voltage up to plus minus 41 volts here, down to 4 ohms load in single-ended or half-bridge setup, while the BTL mode has a minimum load of only 8 ohms. Now this amplifier board is clearly a dual BTL mode, so loading it with 4 ohms load with high supply voltage might be a huge problem. You see, this chip uses multiple pins as a supply voltage pin here. And if we look at one of the supply pin rails here, it only uses one via to jumper it to the main rail. And these vias will not be able to handle very high currents. That is probably why the max AC voltage rating here is only 24 volts AC. The chip is very powerful but the design of its PCB here is for medium operation only. And another problem I see here is its filter capacitors. The board obviously requires a dual rail transformer as its supply. Each channel here uses 4 capacitors, so 2 capacitors for each rail which equals to 2000 microfarads per rail. And with a linear supply, the supply ripple will be so terrible with only 1 amp drawn from it. I'll do the test later, but for now, let's see how it sounds. Now powering it up, there's no pop-up sound nor hissing sounds. The amp sounds clean just sitting idle. So this amp sounds absolutely good. It sounds like Class AB amp to me, but it heat ups quickly compared to other Class D amplifier chips. About its frequency response with 4 ohms load, it can go down to 10 Hz, so bass response is amazing with this one, although it roll off at around 5 kHz. But with 8 ohms load, this amp's response is almost the same as a class AB1, reaching over 20 kHz without rolling off. So loading it with 8 ohms load will be the best for hi-fi setups. Before proceeding to the power test, I would like to clarify that my input used in the ZK3000 to review doesn't clip that easily at max volume. Now as mentioned earlier, using a linear supply with it will have ripple issues. So here it is under normal loads. Look at that ripple before the chip shut down itself. Now let me add these capacitors and see the improvement. I added an extra bridge rectifier here since we increased our filter and take note that the capacitor addition is only for linear supplies. You don't need to add one if you're using a switch mode power supply. Now here's the ripple after I added the capacitors and it's more stable now. Now let's proceed to the power test. I'm loading it with 4 ohms here, so there's clipping. And it's still wobbling because of my supply and we're getting around 22.15 volts RMS here. So that was 22.15 volts RMS squared divided with 4 ohms load. And we've got 122 watts RMS per channel into 4 ohms load. And before the addition of capacitors, I only got around 87 watts RMS into 4 ohms. So it's a huge help here. 
Now proceeding with 8 ohms load which is the rated load for this amplifier. We're getting around 36.3 volts RMS here. So 36.3 volts RMS squared divided by 8 ohms load and we've got 164 watts RMS into an 8 ohms load and of course my supply dropped to about plus minus 29 volts DC here so imagine how much power it can provide at higher voltage but again it is not recommended because of its PCB design so now in conclusion this board is highly capable if set up properly the efficiency is not that great compared to other chips but its sound quality might be the best for hi-fi class d setup the power rating is a bit disappointing because of its pcb design with a cost of around 35 usds more expensive than the zk3002 so without modifications i'll give it around 6.5 out of 10 for its power but for its sound quality this is a solid 10 out of 10 and if you want one i recommend to find this old version since the new version has even worse output filter design it's really up to you now about the capacitors again you'll only need those with linear supplies and just like that, I just found an amp for mid-highs for my upcoming 2.1 amplifier project. So feel free to ask questions in the comments below. Give this video a like and we'll do something else for the next one.